Good morning, church, and welcome here to Belfast South Methodist Church uh, this on our anniversary serve Sunday. And a warm welcome also to those who worship with us online. The announcements. During the period between Easter and Pentecost, the Methodist Church in Ireland has organised 50 days of prayer, which if you go on to www.irishmethodist.org slash 50 days, you can follow along with that during these days between Easter and Pentecost. On Tuesday morning, we have our regular drop-in for coffee at 10.30. All are welcome. And it's not only coffee, it's chat and conversation as well. Bible study on Wednesday evening at 7.30. You can either attend here in person or join with it online. On Friday evening, uh, between 6 and 7, we have our community meal. If you haven't come along already, please come along. Bring some friends or neighbours as well. Whoever turns up gets fed. We, and if you turn up at quarter to seven, you might not get as much. <laughs> uh, we start serving from six o'clock. The service is next Sunday in the circuit. The service here. Uh, will be led by the Reverend David Campton, and next Sunday will be Aldersgate Sunday. So next Sunday is Aldersgate Sunday. In Grosvenor, Ro Grosvenor Hall, it is Emily Highland. In Sandy Row, Andrew Irvine. And in Donegal Road, it will be June Park. Your support for Storehouse is always appreciated. And during this month of May, we've been asked to supply nappies size six uh, size three and four. You know the way Sainsbury's keep a track of what you buy? I think they've got a surprise of what we have bought this month. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, today is the start of Christian Aid Week. Uh, you should have received a Christian Aid envelope as you came in. If you haven't, there are more available uh, at, as you go out bring them back next week or the week after there are also Christian Aid devotionals a seven day devotional that are available in the foyer as well if you want to pick one up the other way to give you can give online and there is a link to give to the South Belfast Methodist Christian Aid and there is a QR uh, square there as well for those who are a little bit more tacky. Today is our 10th anniversary service here and it is very good to have back with us the Reverend Fred, Dr. Fred Munts. Fred, I had to show you around. I think you didn't know your way about. <laughs> that, that man knows every inch and corner of this building. <laughs> Uh, it's very good to have you back with us, Fred. As, as it's a birthday celebration, there is tea and coffee afterwards in the hall, so please stay and join us for tea and coffee. It's our 10th birthday. Recently, uh, Georgina Hoey has had her 90th birthday, and also this week, David Reid, I'll not tell you the number, but if you add it to our 10, it would make 100. <laughs> uh, congratulations. I think that's all the announcements.
and again, a happy anniversary to us. Uh, we're glad to be able to celebrate uh, this really important year for us of 10 years of the Occupy Center in this place and as Belfast South Methodist Church. Fred, you are very welcome. We're so glad to have you here. I've known you for a very long time, Fred, and uh, it's, it's good to, to follow you uh, here in, in this pulpit. And uh, I was reminded that you were here for a good 10 years. Uh, it was quite a time and you saw an awful lot of change during that time. So. Uh, thank you for coming back and being with us today. And I want to thank you for being here, uh, whether you're here or you're joining online. Thank you for celebrating with us. And uh, among you, uh, there are those of you who also serve on the Belfast South Network Company or have been previous members. Uh, there's members of the church that perhaps haven't been here in some time and you've come back to join us today as a bit of a reunion. You are all very welcome. So let us gather and worship uh, with these words that we share together. We gather looking back to see the paths taken, looking forward to see our path. We honor those who have gone before us, learning from their successes and failures. We celebrate who we are today and welcome the possibilities and opportunities before us. We gather to worship God, the God of yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Let's stand and sing together, God is here as we his people.
and let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that we are celebrating our church anniversary of 10 years. We thank you that we are all one in Christ, and we pray that as members of your body, your Holy Spirit would knit us together in the bonds of unity and love. Lord, you have promised that you are the one that would build your church, and we ask that you would continue to equip each of us, both individually and corporately, with the talents and gifts that may be used to your praise and glory. May we edify all that is about you in our world. Protect us from that which would destroy and cause divisions among your body. Help us to be sober-minded, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, and gentle one towards each other. Let us not be motivated by selfishness, but in humility may we seek to regard the needs and necessities of others before our own. Give wisdom to the ministers and church council. Give wisdom to those that preach and teach, and a teachable spirit to those that listen. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all this day and forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And brothers and sisters, even as we pray and celebrate our local church today, we remember the church around the world. And we have been very fortunate that there is a prayer of solidarity that's prepared each month, uh, which focuses on a different uh, project around the world or a different church around the world. And today the Methodist Church in Ireland has provided us with a prayer for South Africa. Um, there has been very severe flooding in uh, the month of April and down the eastern coast region of South Africa and more than 400 people have died and many were injured and over 50 people are still missing. We may have missed this in the news with other things that are going on in the world so it's important that we pray for this project and this area. Uh, two of our uh, World Development Relief Partners who are there is Pakamisa and Pinetown and the Church Land Program. And these are things that we've talked about in past years here in our congregation. Both of these partners are helping their communities as much as they can to deal with the aftermath of the floods. And uh, so please do continue to pray for them beyond today. But right now, we do want to pray for our partners in South Africa. Let us pray. Father God, we come before you in prayer for our brothers and sisters in South Africa after the devastating floods that have taken so much from so many. We pray for those who have lost loved ones, for those who have been injured, for those whose homes have been destroyed or damaged, for those who have lost livelihoods. God, be near to them in their pain, comfort them in their despair, and restore their hope. We pray for those who are rebuilding their lives and their communities, for Pakamisa and Church Land Program as they support their local communities. God, give them wisdom in their decisions, energy when they are fatigued, and provision where they are lacking. In your name we pray. Amen. And still as a, a means of uh, being COVID safe, we don't pass an offering plate, but we just recognize our gifts and our offerings to the Lord, and we give thanks uh, for all that the Lord has done for us. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you to your generosity to us, and we ask that you also give us a generous heart. We pray that you would accept our offerings as they go to help others who are most in need. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now we hear from the scripture. Amen. 
The Old Testament lesson is taken from the first book of Kings, chapter 1, reading verses 32 to 40. <clears throat> King David said, Call in Zadok the priest, Nathan the prophet, and Benaiah son of Jehoiada. When they came before the king, they said to him, Take your Lord's servants with you, and put Solomon my son on my own mule, and take him down to Gaian. There shall Zadok the priest and Nathan the prophet anoint him king over Israel. Blow the trumpet and shout, Long live King Solomon! Then you are to go up with him, and he is to come and sit on my throne and reign in my place. I have appointed him ruler over Israel and Judah. Benaiah, son of Jehoda, answered the king, Amen. May the Lord, the God of my lord the king, so declare it. As the Lord was with my lord the king, so may he be with Solomon to make his throne even greater than the throne of my lord, King David. So Zadok the priest, Nathan the prophet, Benaiah, son of Jehoda, the Kerithites and the Pelethites went down and put Solomon on King David's mule, and they escorted him to Gion. Zadok the priest took the horn of oil from the sacred tent and anointed Solomon. Then they sounded the trumpet, and all the people shouted, Long live King Solomon! And all the people went up after him, playing pipes, and rejoicing greatly, so that the ground shook with the sound. The New Testament lesson is taken from the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 22, reading verses 15 to 22. Then the Pharisees went out and laid plans to trap him in his words. They sent their disciples to him, along with the Herodians. Teacher, they said, we know that you are a man of integrity and that you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. You aren't swayed by others because you pay no attention to who they are. Tell us then, what is your opinion? Is it right to pay the poll tax to Caesar or not? But Jesus, knowing their evil intent, said, You hypocrites, why are you trying to trap me? Show me the coin used for paying tax. They brought him a denarius, and he asked them, Whose image is this, and whose inscription? Caesar's, they replied. Then he said to them, So give back to Caesar what is Caesar's, and to God what is God's. When they heard this, they were amazed. So they left him and went away. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We raise our voices together as we sing Jesus, the joy of loving hearts. Let's stand and sing together.
seems as if uh, I conducted the service here last Sunday, and now I'm here this Sunday again, uh, because I feel so familiar with not only your faces, some of you I don't know, uh, but I'm sure you're, you're very welcome, but you're very welcome in this place. And some of you who know me maybe far too well, because whenever I'm good, I'm very, very good, and when I'm bad, you don't want to be in the same room sometimes. As many were testified when we came to our committees, and uh, as we thought about not just this building, but what would happen in the building, and how you would look forward to other um, parts with which you could uh, engage. Actually, I remember my last time here as minister, I was in a bit of a panic. I don't often panic, but I was in a bit of a panic to get out that morning because I had to get uh, things ready and get Marilyn ready to come to church that day. And I bought three pairs of shoes uh, down in Leeds in Santa Row. And uh, it was dark that night. And I put my shoes on and came out to church and I conducted the service. And I thought, giving it a bit of a, a long sigh. That's over. And uh, we went in for a cup of tea or coffee. We're doing that this morning. The same as we went after the service. And Wallace McConnell was there with Betty, his wife, and I was going round to everybody as they sat in little groups. And I sat there, and Wallace, with whom I worked in the book room when I was a student uh, at University Road, and he said, Fred, and he pointed out. I had a brown shoe on <laughs> and a black shoe. So it was a bit of a laugh in us ever since, and this is the first time I've really told it publicly. The other thing I remember about here is uh, when we came to my singing and when we came to the preaching, if David didn't like it, I thought it was going on too long, he just turned me down. And that's what I hope you don't do this, this morning, David. A big thank you to the Reverend Emily Highland and to the members of the, the Church Council uh, for inviting me here today. I'm very glad to be able to say I was able to, to come. And to David uh, Galt as well uh, for his word of welcome. Now let's pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, I suppose I could say this is a bit of a, a red, white, and uh, blue anniversary year for all kinds of reasons. And here in Belfast, uh, for your 10th anniversary, and people everywhere should really be celebrating with happiness and rejoicing. And that's quite right, too. But what I wondered uh, could we do here at Belfast to add our merry voices to the music of today and this anniversary year. Several ideas came into my head. I thought perhaps we could uh, give everyone coming to church this morning, we could give them a cap. And with the right signal, we would throw our caps up in the air. Uh, an old age old way of expressing delight. Or else I thought I perhaps could double the length of the sermon. Oh well, that's a well tried formula, people tell you that's a well tried formula for increasing the happiness in the world. And I almost asked the two Rosemary's, Rosemary Taylor and Rosemary Rainey, to do a few cartoons down the aisle and along the front and up again. But at that, my imagination ran dry. <laughs> Let me say to you, your anniversary year, this 10th anniversary, is shared with many others. It's the um, 100th anniversary year of the formation of the BBC. India received their independence 75 years ago. 25 years ago from the death of uh, Diana and the Hong Kong handover, 50 years from the, the Munich Olympic massacre, and of course there are many others. But significantly, I'm to do with the sermon this morning, I'm telling you there's going to be a, a kind of reference to some new 
music at the beginning, and the next time you have some music at the end, you will know that we are nearly finished. I hope the light, the link between all of this isn't too tenuous, but I am a bit rusty after nine years without preaching every week. By the way, I hold the record, I think, in my provision. I preached over a thousand sermons while I was here. Oh, 
including whatever obsequious sacrifice, courtiers and flunkies, buying and scraping, and then of course on the other side there would be the plotters, the spies, the traitors, and within their moment conspired against him. And Nathan the prophet, he is likely the one and to have been the one who would speak truth to power, to tell the king, David, you are a sinner. Take him down, perhaps, a plague or two. And he was loyal and true and honest. And what's more, David the king knew that Nathan did not have any fulfillment of any kind. Any person who is in power, Wherever that is, need a Nathan as well as a Zadok. In the case of the, it was the case of the priest plus the prophet, who set the direction of the tomb of Solomon. And I believe that the reign of Queen Elizabeth II has shown us how in the glorious age and in post-colonial times, the monarchy must make its appeal to the widest possible spread of humanity. The Prince of Wales has already declared his wish to be a defender of faiths rather than defender of the faith. But we note that his work with the unemployed and disenchanted young people in our inner cities suggests that our next money has grown well and dear well. May I say and finish it up with regard to monarchy and say I believe that society and the world need a prophetic presence. They need someone, some people to keep them right, to foretell and to foretell. And I believe that it's been wonderful that Her Majesty the Queen has always sought to consult the Church whenever she came to particular decisions for the nation and for her family life. And this is where I believe that we can step in. So far as we are concerned, you and I are proud to stand in the long and respect traditions of the Methodist Church. Wasn't it a prophetic vision that the people here had when it came to undertaking the construction of the building? It took all that time, at least nine years of constant hard work with sweat and sometimes tears I admire you for your commitment and sacrifice. May I further say that I thank God for those who came before us, whose breathtaking vision created the earlier buildings and began the witness in South Belfast, and for Christian men and women who sustained the work and through the years who have kept the prophetic church clean and pure and the flow of the gospel vibrant. This church, this building your work, is known everywhere. I happen to go into a solicitor's library down on Lisburn Road, and he asked me what I was doing on the Lisburn Road, and I live in Carrick Fergus. And I said, well, I came here because I used to work here a to work, or I went in the Anthony Centre in Belfast South Methodist Church. Oh, he said, I've been to three events in there. And it's beautiful and it's wonderful the kind of work that the people are doing. Solicitors don't normally say that kind of thing. May I also refer and acknowledge the dedication and commitment in recent ministers. How Henry Keyes, John Newton, 
Watson. All of you were influential in uniting the church in its ear. They nurtured the people of God, and they did so with the support of their, of their wives. And their work among you is legendary. Here are people who fall in love. People who married here and from here. Children were baptized in this church. Loved ones have worshipped and worked in this place. They have died. Services of thanksgiving in their honor were conducted. You have mourned here. You found Christian fellowship here and understanding. And you know, like me, this place so intimately and permanently. It means a lot to you and to your family members. Our Methodist people, with such a prophetic message, saw the gold gold work in the heart of the city. This place where people and faith and cultures meet. A place where wealth and adjunct poverty sit side by side. A place where we acknowledge rampant fundamental atheism. Where the theory that God is dead is promoted. A place where some people declare a belief in God. And a place too where spirituality of one form or another is very much in vogue. You have all the isms around here. Secularism, racism, sexism, consumerism, materialism, individualism, immorality abounds. And there was a loss of Christian standard everywhere. The isms are very seductive, Suicide, abortion, war, poverty, nuclear weaponry, the use of internet intrusion in our daily lives are not minor commentaries on our culture in which we have nothing to say. The church should have plenty to say about these matters. And through your prophetic witness, you want to call a halt. You are saying by your presence in this part of the city, enough. We've had enough. Look, everyone, here we are as Methodists, and there is another way in life. And you know, we have a distinctive and a unique way of thinking. I'm looking in on you. I still get some emails. You have shown through the activities and the meetings that have been arranged and facilitated as you are addressing many of these issues. You are a prophetic church. You do bring meaning into life. Now, I first say, at this place you'll need to build again the prophetic message for the next decade in even more creative, imaginative, and innovative ways, which allow you to speak of the presence and the love of God. Now to do so, we may need to recover from a corporate amnesia of all things Wesleyan. And may I suggest to do so, you may need to promote wherever you need to do it within the life of the church the concept of the formation of a fresh, contemporary Wesleyan theology and all things Methodist within the richness of our traditions. Here the prayer is you will build a community of faith in this prophetic church where none is excluded and all are given value and welcome. Here you will form even more partnerships here you will strive for the coming of God's kingdom among you. Here you will seek to connect God to the people and the people to God through the unique way that you serve. And so you grow.
Jesus. The vision for this prophetic church, the people of God. You have excellent premises. You have good fellowship. You have generous goodwill. You have sure good preaching. And most of all, you have the message that the love of God is for all. It comes in as water after a long drought. The message of the cross of Jesus is for all. It comes in and lifts a great load of guilt and dysfunction and offers restoration and healing. And the message of the Holy Spirit comes in and is for all and offers strength and peace for every man and woman and child where they are. I'm coming to the end. Let me close with this suggestion on this 10th anniversary Sunday when I believe that our four fathers of the faith and in whose traditions and understanding of the church and to those would take delight in. It's a true story. If you've heard it before, you'll enjoy it for a second time. It concerns that great composer Puccini. Most of you will remember him who was works of Madame Butterfly or La Bouquet. Puccini contracted cancer early in his career while he was writing his masterpiece, Turn the Dot. His friends encouraged him to stop and rest and to stop writing. But Puccini refused and he simply said to them, I'm going to do as much as I can in this great masterwork. But it's up to me, my friends, to finish it. Well, Puccini did die. And as a result, his friends had a choice. They could either mourn or grieve forever at their loss. Or they could do what he had requested. They could finish his masterpiece. And so they decided to do the latter. In 1926, at La Scala Opera House in Milan, the great masterpiece of Puccini's was first introduced. The composer Arturo Toscanini was the conductor. And when he came to that part of the opera where Puccini had stopped because of his early death, Toscanini, with his back, stopped the orchestra playing. He turned around, he faced the audience, and he had tears streaming down his cheeks. And he said, this is where the master ends. After a minute of silence, he lifted up his head, took out his handkerchief, and with an artistic flourish, he wiped away his tears. He put on a broad smile. He tapped his baton and said, and here is where his friends begin. And this is when you begin. You are all heirs to the spirit of your four birds, in family and in church. You are all heirs to the Holy Spirit. And if you really want to give thanks today on this 10th anniversary, and if you really want to remember this church and witness, then why not give yourselves to the task of commitment to being the prophetic church? And we will discover, amazingly, divine guidance, inward satisfaction, and spiritual refreshment and peace all becoming a reality in your life and in this place. So let us drink again of the water of life. Why not speak the holy language, teach our Wesleyan doctrines, imitate the way of Christ, encourage one another, bear each other's burdens, sing our Methodist hymns, increase in faith, and finish off what has been stuck. In the name of the Father and
and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The hymn is 631, the hymns and psalms, Awake, Awake, to Love and Work. Please be seated. Fred, I think we all want to thank you and we'll have the opportunity to do so over coffee, but thank you for your message this morning and uh, just as much your presence with us. Uh, it will be good to, to share uh, in memories of friendship and continue that friendship with you. Let's take just a moment now and pray together. As we pray, uh, say, Lord of love, can you respond? Hear our prayer. Let us pray. Loving God, make our church a loving family where the younger members respect and show understanding for the older, and the older members respect and show understanding for the younger. May this church be a place where everyone feels valued as a much-loved child of God. Lord of love, hear our prayer. May each one of us recognize with confidence your call in our lives. Make us open to your will and brave to obey. Give us courage to speak out for you in all situations. Lord of love, Hear our prayer. May we be a people who wait in humility for your guidance. Make us patient and obedient to your will for our lives and for our church. Lord of love, hear our prayer. May we be a church that serves where you send us, ready to go to the needy wherever they are. Make us more aware of how we can serve those in distress in this community and in the nations of the world. Lord of love, hear our prayer. May we be a church ready to take your healing love to those who are sick or sad. Make us a blessing to those amongst whom we live, that you may touch and heal them at their place of need. Lord of love, Hear our prayer. Loving God, we long to grow to maturity in Christ, but often feel that we are slow learners. Help us to become confident of our identity in you, that we may grow in love and service, fulfilling your plan for our lives and our church. We ask this in the name of Jesus, who loved us and gave himself for us. 
Amen. And we continue to pray that prayer that Jesus taught us as we say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day daily bread and forgive us. And lead us not but deliver us from the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now joyfully we sing our closing hymn before uh, I remind you that you're invited to coffee and tea. Um, we will, uh, Fred and I will meet any of those who can't remain just at the doors as you're going out, but I do hope that you're able to stay. Let's sing together, Father of Everlasting Grace. share the words of the grace with one another. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.